Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks and weighing in at an official weight of 257 pounds. This 1968 Olympic gold medal champion won the heavyweight title in 1973. After a 10-year hiatus, he returned to the ring in 1987, and since then his record has been a perfect 24-0 with 23 KOs. His career record as a professional, 69 victories, 65 KOs, only two defeats, 56 of these KOs have come in four rounds or less, and he's considered by most experts to be the most devastating puncher in heavyweight history from Houston, Texas, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger and four color trim, weighed in at an even 208 pounds. He's a member of America's greatest Olympic boxing team, the class of 84. He won a bronze medal that year, and he was the first of that great squad to win a world title as a professional. In only his 12th professional bout, he became a cruiserweight champion. And he is now, in boxing history, the only titleist from that division to step up to the heavyweights and capture that crown also. On, His overall on, record as a professional is 25-0, and 0, with 21 KOs. More than half of his KO victories have been in four rounds or less, and not one heavyweight opponent has made it to the final bell. And for the last five years, he's knocked out every opponent he has faced. We talked From about Atlanta, this. Georgia, High. ladies so and gentlemen, okay. presenting the undisputed, undefeated, heavyweight champion of the world, the real deal, Evander Holyfield. Okay. You see where the trunks are? Okay. Look, they're all the way. Okay, gentlemen, you both received your pre-fight instructions in your dressing room. I expect a clean break at all times. Good luck to both of you. Let's touch gloves. And we are ready to begin round one. George Foreman with new life. A chance to regain a heavyweight title after 18 years. And Holyfield... The undisputed cruiserweight champion, now the undisputed heavyweight champion. This long-awaited bout as George lounges casually over in his corner, waiting the bell to begin round one, scheduled for 12. There we go. I noticed think that both men are pretty dry. They didn't really warm up that much. Uh, they're not sweating yet. I don't know if that'll have any... Uh... Foreman looks so imposing. He looks so much bigger than Holyfield. Holyfield's doing what he said he would do. Move laterally, make George throw punches, wear George down. He felt if he could get George past the 34th round, he could wear him down. And Foreman, with his cross defense, would like nothing better than to trap Holyfield and put him away. I don't think Big George has thrown a punch yet. Uh, he's conserving his energy. He's uh, sticking out the jab, but he's a little bit short with it. Holyfield moving and jabbing. He wants to be a target, but an elusive target. When George uh, puts the cross-arm defense up, Evander goes underneath it to the body, which is a good tactic early in the fight, because, of course, the whole game plan for Evander Holyfield is to wear George Foreman down. Holyfield moving very well, scoring with punches. George trying to deflect the punches. George has been able to trap people against the ropes and put them away. George reached it with a couple of stiff jabs then for the first time. The crowd got excited. Vander comes back with a left-right. Left hook to the body as well. Holyfield moving, hitting, 
and he's hitting hard. George is absorbing a couple of good shots here in the first round. Another left hook by Vander Holyfield. One minute to go in round one. Good jab by Holyfield, squaring George Foreman's face. George tries to launch that right hand. The right hand that has put some people in bye-bye land. Back comes Holyfield. Whoa, combination from the champion. George caught a little bit of that right hand, but it was basically in back of the head, and uh, I don't think Evander really was hurt by it. But George certainly is bringing that right hand now, and the pace is beginning to pick up. 20 seconds remaining in round one. Holyfield very busy, moving, hitting, slipping and sliding. Ten seconds remaining in round one. Good left hook by Holyfield in close there. Sent a spray of uh, sweat flying. Let's listen. It a uh, swing over is Angelo Dundee. Works with George Foreman, who refuses to sit down. Instead, he puts his foot up on the ring stool. <laughs> he couldn't be much more nonchalant than that. I think George works hard at being cool. You know, it's definitely part of his routine. It's a psychological ploy. And uh, let's face it, it would bother me if my opponent was over there uh, acting like he was uh, at a picnic. Round two, scheduled for 12. I guess we can safely say Holyfield won that first round with his moving and hitting and combinations. George threw very few punches. He tried to launch a right hand. Oh, good right by Holyfield. Very good right. I'd say so far, uh, Vander is following the game plan perfectly. Uh, he has received a few stiff jabs and a few clubbing rights, but he's out punching George approximately three or four to one. He is doubling the left hand, body and head. George is trying to look unperturbed, but he's definitely bothered at this point. Well, he's certainly not grinning. He's got a very serious look on his face, and he's already received a few sharp punches, nothing devastating. And George misses with a hook to the body, then lands one a little bit below the waist and gets a warning from Rudy Battle. Holyfield continues to punch away, moving, punching, keeping to the game plan. George with a left hook and a right hand. I think they were both partially blocked, Dick. Vander got his hands up in time. Second round action. Holyfield's first defense of the undisputed heavyweight title. Watch the hands, watch the hands. Holyfield working away with the left hand, staying out of reach, countering with the right. Holyfield countered very nicely with the right hand, overhand right. All of the good, clean punches so far have been landed by Evander Holyfield. He's doing exactly what he wanted to do, and uh, George really hasn't been able to unleash any of his big bombs. Not any that landed, anyway. One minute remaining in round two. George lands a left. Holyfield on the ropes. George clipped Vandy with the left. Tried to follow up. A clubbing overhand right. The crowd is very excited. Good left by George. The best rally so far by George Foreman. Foreman going after Holyfield. He stung him with a left hand moments ago. The crisis seems to have passed. Uh, Holyfield still has some bounce in his legs, but a few more right hands like that might take him out. Another right hand, but it was a glancing blow, I think. Ten seconds remaining in round two as Holyfield fights back. George steps. Nice right hand, but Holyfield countered well.
three. Foreman picked up the pace a little bit. Holyfield comes out firing. Left-right combination. George with an uppercut. George. <laughs> Tried to hammer that right hand. Yeah, that looping overhand right, uh, George has to that's throw that right hand a little straighter if he expects to connect with it. Uh, that's, uh, that's George's trademark, that overhand right. Right now, Vander Holly feels a little bit too sharp uh, to get tagged by that, and George just missed again. Holyfield. Foreman trying to cut off the ring. Trying to trap Holyfield. Holyfield has to move out of there. He has to continue moving laterally, back and forth. There's a left from Foreman. Every time Foreman hits, the crowd cheers. Obviously, the crowd very much in favor of George Foreman. And I think it's safe to say that uh, Vander Holyfield has felt the power of George Foreman, at least to a small degree. Originally, it was said that Holyfield would never make a heavyweight. He was too small, but he's become very powerful and very skilled, and he has conducted himself well as a heavyweight, winning the undisputed title. But here is Foreman at 257. Trying to regain a title he held 18 years ago. If we look back in history, Dick, many of our great heavyweight champions were what we'd be considered small today. Joe Lewis, Jack Dempsey, certainly Rocky Marciano. And I think uh, if the Vanna Holyfield loses tonight, it won't be because he's too small. It'll be because George is a better fighter. Put your hands in there. Watch your hands. George is continuing to press here, but he's not having the success he had last round and early this round. And he's running into quite a few counters as he comes in. Well, it's, it's thought, Nigel, that if it goes past four rounds, Foreman could be in some trouble. Well, his arms do seem to be getting a little heavy. Oh, Kevin Rush combination. Staggered. Holyfield has staggered Foreman. He's got it going with 10 seconds left in round three. Evander's landed about four consecutive combinations to the head. And George certainly is reeling and rocking in there, but he's fighting back. The last punch was a good left hook by Evander. Evander Holyfield coming on strong in the closing moments of the round. Stunning Foreman with a combination. Here's the replay. Left hook, right hand, left hook off the top. It's a nice series of punches by Evander, especially the first two. Very good left hook, and another one. The right hand was a little high on the forehead. Seems to be some smoke in the arena that's causing a little disturbance in the crowd. I can't quite make out what it is, but I think it might be a smoke bomb. Uh, we, we understand it's a smoke bomb. We just hope that no one panics. Round four. This fight's too good for anybody to care about the smoke bomb. I think this place could be burning down and people would stay here and watch the fight. How do you have your scorecard at this point, Nigel? I've got the first and last round for Evander with the second being even. The fourth round, some feel, is the limit for Foreman. You know, Foreman doesn't train very hard. His uh, training is not all that intensive because he has been used to ending things quickly in his comeback. Yes, well, only uh, Everett Bigfoot Martin went the distance with George in the comeback, and uh, everybody else has gone bye-bye. Only Phil with a good left hook as they uh, come together. George seems to have uh, absorbed those punches in the previous round rather well, Dick. He uh, did. 
surprisingly well. He took uh, several flush shots, and uh, here he is still marching forward. And uh, the first real clinch of the fight is uh, initiated by Evander Holyfield. Holyfield is definitely sticking to the game plan of moving, hitting, trying to tire George out. He wants George to throw more punches, and George likes to throw. And he said, for every one punch George throws, I will throw three or four. Well, of course, it's an old cliche in boxing, but it is true, though, that missing a punch takes a lot out of you. And uh, when George winds up with some of those big swings and misses, it probably hurts him as much as, whoa, good right hand by Amanda. Right hand to the side of Foreman's head. And uh, George seems to be uh, very stoic, but he's uh, taking a lot of blows flush in the face. Foreman tries a combination of his own, and here comes Holyfield with his combination. A jab, a stiff jab. Holyfield is such a disciplined fighter, and what he's doing that's really smart here, Dick, is he's alternating the way he retreats. First he goes to the left, then he'll stop and move to the right. And that way, George isn't quite sure how he's going to cut off the ring. And the lateral movement has to be alternated, and that's exactly what Evander's doing. And landing big right hands like that one. George looks like he's a little bit shaky. Very much like the last round. Oh, a midsection shot oh. from Holyfield. I think I almost saw that come out the back of George's uh, spine. Ten seconds remaining in round four. Starts with a jab, doubling, tripling the left hand to the midsection. A combination. This is a real David and Goliath type confrontation. It seems that uh, Holyfield certainly has the slingshot, and he's winging a lot of uh, stones right into George Fane. Very good face. right and left hand from Holyfield. Oh, oh a left uppercut and a right hand. George is absorbing some punches here in this fifth round. Georgie Benton and Lou Duva must be very happy the way that uh, Ben Holyfield is following a disciplined fight plan as uh, Rudy Battles warns George Norman to keep his punches up. You know, Rudy must be doing a good job, Dick, because I've hardly noticed him. And uh, the fighters are. Uh, there's only been one clinch that I can remember. Well, it's said, it, it said that a good referee is never conspicuous in the ring. And Rudy Battle has stayed out of the way, but kept an eagle eye on these two massive men. Foreman with a jab. You know, that's such a good punch for George. I really don't understand why he doesn't mount a concentrated attack with the jab. It's, it's the one punch he's been consistent with, and uh, there's a left hook to the belly. And uh, I think that, that there, there's another one. Of course, he receives two back. Body and head work from Holyfield. Very nice combinations. He's ripping them off. You can see how slow George Foreman's hands are in comparison. But of course, he still has an awful lot of power behind him. Under a minute to go in round five. Foreman said that Jerry Coney hit him harder than anybody has, but he's got to feel those punches from Holyfield tonight. Well, we'll have to see what Big George says after the fight, of course, but uh, all those combinations have to be mounting up. The accumulative effect has to catch up with him eventually, unless he puts together a big blockbuster and takes Amanda out of there. Which he just landed a left hook below the belt, which uh, Battle didn't seem to see, and then came upstairs with a left hook to Evander's head. George Foreman is now breathing harder. Well, here he comes. George He's is, to Holyfield. George is putting together a rally here. Some clubbing rights to the head. Evander Holyfield is obviously bothered. 
but he countered with a nice right hand, and I think it all began with a low blow. The crowd loves it. Evander Holyfield, the undisputed world heavyweight champion, has taken some shots tonight, but he has also delivered some mighty shots. Well, unlike some heavyweight fights we've seen, uh, there's been a lot of give and take. It hasn't been one-way traffic. Certainly, Evander Holyfield has had the advantage, but uh, George Foreman's right in there. And there's the good right hand on the replay. And there's another one. Luckily, Evander did get his shoulder in the way of the second right hand and partially nullified the effect. Here it comes again. There's the shoulder and the elbow, partially deflecting the punch. But definitely was a good right hand. How did you score that last round? That's the first round I gave to George because I think he legitimately hurt Evander the last 30 seconds. Round six. Scheduled for 12 for the undisputed heavyweight title held by the smaller man in the ring, Holyfield, but a well-conditioned athlete. I think a lot of people are surprised that George is still going this strong this late. I think he's already proved some of the so-called experts uh, wrong and that he couldn't keep up a fairly fast pace. A tremendous right hand from Holyfield. A stiff jab, a left-right combination. Here comes Foreman with a combination of his own. Left hook by Holyfield on the inside. I tell you, George is going for it. He's not holding back. Another right hand from Holyfield. He's hitting with authority, and it shows you how Foreman can absorb punches. Certainly, the two fights that George Foreman has lost previously, he basically lost because he fought himself into a state of exhaustion. Uh, the Ali fight and the uh, Jimmy Young fight was both a case where Big George ran out of gas late in the fight. But so far, his tank seems to uh, be holding up pretty good. Bring up. Come back. We're halfway through round six. Scheduled for 12. Right to the head, left hook to the body combination by Holyfield. Foreman with a glance and right in return, but I don't think it did any damage. George looked a little winded in the last round, but seems to have regained his composure here in the sixth round. Well, one thing Holyfield doesn't want to do is get in a pushing competition with George Foreman. There's no way he's going to win that. And uh, he's going to have to move away when George starts to lean and maw. Holyfield moving and hitting. He has to do that. He can't stand still. Good little left hook by George Foreman. Another one, and a third one. That was three left hooks in a row, and Holyfield did seem to be jarred. George with a one-two, having a good rally here. Holyfield's trying to fight back when he should be running. Ten seconds and counting down in round six. Will Foreman steal the round? Let's see. As we get ready for round seven. Considering the amount of leather that's been swapped, both men are remarkably unmarked. Round seven. In fact, he's looking better, as a matter of fact. He's looking a little bit rejuvenated. That's a tough way to find the fountain of youth, get hit in the face by a van of Oh, right hand from right hand. Foreman. Definitely. Stun Holyfield. George is coming on like gangbusters here. That looping overhand right found a home. And a little short chopping uppercuts. The overhand right. Holyfield's got to move. He's got to get out of there. And he comes back with a left hook of his own. 
Bangor took a series of hard punches. I think he stayed in there a little bit too long. But George is certainly hammering home some clubbing shots. George is now trying to rip the uppercut inside. He's going to that in this round. Here comes Holyfield. Back. Doubling his left and his right. Scoring heavily. A series of approximately half a dozen combinations. Flushing George Foreman's face, and he's hardly bunched. George Foreman just took some tremendous shots. Those are the punches that are put down. All the heavyweights that have been to Holyfield has faced so far. If not put them down, certainly stop them. And here's George coming back. The one's got to be the most exciting round of the fight so far, Dick. They both had good flurries. The crowd is on its feet, cheering. 19,000 strong. What many people thought might be a farce is turning out to be a classic, Dick. George Foreman has far more than I certainly gave him credit for. Another combination, they're trading combinations. Only fields are sharper, but Foreman's certainly carrying more weight. Foreman appears unbothered by those punches. It's amazing. It's incredible. I think they're both feeling the pace right now. They're taking a breather by mutual consent. 30 seconds remaining in round seven. Scheduled for 12. Both men hanging on a little bit. Nine seconds remaining in round seven. What a round. What a round is right. Here comes the replay. Right hand, left, another right. The crowd is chanting between rounds. There's the right hand again from another angle. And here comes Evander Holyfield back with his flurry. An amazing round. And how about your scorecard? You went to George on that round? The reason I did, I thought they both had tremendous rallies, but George actually hurt Evander. And Evander was. His combinations didn't seem to even budge Big George. Round eight. Vander's back to moving again, Dick. Maybe he got instructions from the corner to use his legs and not mix it up so much. If the strategy is for, as it has been stated is, for George Foreman to tire, it hasn't happened yet. Holyfield landing some thunderous midsection shots. You can hear those just smacking into his big belly back in the 10th row. It sounds like he's beating a big base drum. Two jarring jabs by Holyfield. The question remains, can Holyfield keep this up or will he punch himself out? Well, so far, Vander hasn't shown uh, that he's fatigued. He has shown that uh, he has felt the power of George Foreman's punches and survived to keep fighting. I think both men should receive high marks for their ability to recuperate. Uh, Foreman is leaning on Holyfield, and that's something Evander doesn't want, because that's like trying to hold up a, a redwood tree. Yeah, it's tough enough holding up your own weight. You don't need to hold up somebody else's as well. A combination from Holyfield, a right and a left. Foreman comes back with a jab. There seems to be a pattern the last few rounds of Evander Holyfield doing well the first half and then George coming back. Uh, we'll see if it follows along in this round. So far, it's uh, been all Evander Holyfield. Holyfield has got to be a bit surprised, wondering why George is not showing the effects of those punches. I'm a bit surprised. I said, keep him up. But of course, George cannot be measured by the same yardstick as most fighters. He seems to be a unique 
It's amazing. Individual. Absolutely an amazing performance. Oh, a right hand square on the button. That's the kind of right hand that dropped Buster Douglas for the count. But George Foreman just stands there soaking it up with an impassive look on his face. Unbelievable. That right hand would have killed 99 out of 100 heavyweights. <laughs> George Foreman didn't even take a backward step, but of course he's not going to win too many rounds on points, just soaking up punishment. Oh, a left, right. Another combination. A left to the midsection of Foreman. With 10 seconds remaining in round eight. by Foreman. Really hasn't been a dull moment. I mean, everybody's been on the edge of their chairs since the introduction. I don't know who's going to win this, but Foreman and Holyfield have both gained a tremendous amount of respect so far in this fight. Even if uh, Foreman should lose, I think it's been a moral victory. Uh, going this far and doing this well, uh, I think uh, surprised an awful lot of people, even though, of course, there were people to picture Big George to win. How do you think Foreman would do against Mike Tyson with a performance like tonight? Well, of course, Mike Tyson would come straight at George Foreman. He wouldn't be using the lateral movement uh, that Evander Holyfield is, and as we all know, styles make fights. So it's a different kettle of fish altogether. Right now, Foreman is trying to press. He's doing a good job with his left hand, which I think is a fine Both weapon. I think he should use it even more than he does. Both hands are free. Both men leaning on each other. Here comes Holyfield back with a left to the midsection. A good right hand to the head. Uh, the same kind of right hand that Evander Holyfield's been landing all night. And George Foreman just doesn't seem phased. George has absorbed a lot of punches, and he has come on strong as the fight wears on. There's Holyfield moving, jabbing. Under a minute and a half to go in this round, round nine. A midsection left from Holyfield. And do they hit? With a thud. George gritted his teeth a little bit after that shot. Uh, I don't think he could deny feeling it. Two good right hands. John Foreman's head back. Good scoring from Holyfield. An uppercut. Foreman pushes Holyfield away. George seems to be puffing up a little bit. Uh, underneath the right eye. Two left hands from Holyfield. Yeah, 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 do you think that uh, George might be saving himself for a, a big rally down the stretch? Because he certainly hasn't done that much the last two rounds. It's been all Holyfield doing exactly what he wants to do. Pop shot, move around, stay out of trouble. Foreman is staggered. George Foreman is staggered. He's in trouble. Holyfield pours it on. The bell interrupts. A big rally. I think they both threw right hands at the same time, and Evander's got there quicker. Round 10. Scheduled for 12. As Holyfield is coming on strong now. He is piling up the points, and Foreman has got to watch the low blows. Another low blow, and Foreman could lose a point. Which he can ill afford at this point. Right. I think we're reaching the point, at least on my highly unofficial scorecard, that George Foreman is going to need a knockout. Or certainly two tremendous rounds here in the 11th and 12th. Hold up, time, time. Neutral corner, neutral corner. All right, time out. 
he has some tape coming off of Evander Holyfield's gloves. I think this little respite will aid George Foreman a little bit more than it will Evander Holyfield. That is a very good point, Nigel. George will definitely get a brief rest as the tape has come loose on Holyfield's glove. That seems to happen a lot in boxing these days. Okay, time's back in now, Dick. George Foreman is lumbering forward at a slightly uh, quicker pace. I think he realizes he's falling behind on the scorecards and uh, definitely needs to do something if he's going to pull this one out. Holyfield keeps moving and hitting. He has stuck to his game plan. There have been moments tonight when he has gotten caught with punches, but he has come right back with a perfect game plan. Moving, hitting, and frustrating George Foreman. And I think what's so good about the Sanders' attack is everything's been off the jab. George's, George's left hand is coming out a lot slower now. Uh, of course, he, he's dangerous right up until the final second of the fight. But it seems that he's wearing down. He has, he has noticeably slowed oh, down. Go! <laughs> right hand! And another one by Evander Holyfield. Holyfield almost walked into a left hand, though. Almost. Almost. And there's a good one-two by George Foreman, and Evander Holyfield holds on, but George Foreman just doesn't seem to have the energy to follow up at this point. Instead of pushing Evander off and opening up, he's uh, clutching with him. Under a minute to go in round 10. I think Evander is still feeling the effects of that right hand, but I don't know if George has the zip to do anything about it. Holyfield has administered quite a punishment here tonight. Foreman has absorbed the punches. Most people, That's very another few low, people, low take blow. this type of punching. Another low blow by George Foreman. And I think Rudy Battle missed that. Yeah, he was probably out of position, Dick. <laughs> 20 seconds remaining in round 10. getting a little sloppy with that right hand. I think uh, George's blows and the fatigue factor is also catching up. Here we go. George trots, jogs out from the corner. I don't think there's too many boxers today that could take the punches that Holyfield is given tonight. Would you agree? Yes, I think that... Uh, There's the point. Taken away for a low blow. Gotta keep him up. Well, that's certainly not going to help George Foreman. Uh, probably trailing on the scorecards anyway. Yeah, certainly bro. trailing on our scorecards. And uh, that point, I think, pretty much says everything as far as uh, George needs a knockout. And uh, right now, it's George that's uh, the only receiving end. That was a tremendous combination from Holyfield, right and left. I have never seen a man take punches like this before. Foreman has taken some tremendous bombs. Well, of course, there are some uh, cynics that have said all along that Evander Holyfield was a blown-up light heavyweight and uh, couldn't punch uh, with the heavyweights. But that certainly hasn't been true with the other heavyweights he's fought. That's so history. I think we have to give credit to George Foreman, credit where credit's due. He's in much better shape than anybody thought he was. And uh, he's going to be dangerous right up until the last 10 seconds because you, uh, you never know when you have the kind of power that George Foreman has. And Evander Holyfield is getting tired too, which makes him susceptible to blows that wouldn't have landed earlier in the fight. about a minute left in round 11. Here comes Foreman. And back comes Holyfield. Yeah, George landed the jabs, and there's another one, but he's not bringing the right hand behind it, which he needs for the KO. Right, let him go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
This has been far better than any expectations. Foreman has got to land that right hand, and Holyfield has got to stay out of the way. He's got to move and hit, and not get careless. Oh, another right hand by Evander, right in the mouth. George has a nice wilt. Up on his left forehead, his temple. I'm surprised that, you know, George Foreman isn't a mass of cuts and bruises. Uh, the amount of punishment he's absorbed, uh, he's a remarkable human being. And win or lose this fight, he's given us all something to remember that we'll never forget. The right hand from Holyfield. Actually, two great human beings. Two very fine athletes. That's it. Nice. Banner Holyfield's everything the heavyweight champion should be, both in and out of the ring. Under two minutes to go in this fight. And to think they laughed at George Foreman when he started his comeback, Dick. Nobody's laughing now. Certainly not a band of Holyfield. George has earned everybody respect with this wonderful performance, win or lose. Holyfield seems to be pretty much trying to just coast home. He's not taking any chances under instructions from Lou Dubin, George Benton. It's the prudent thing to do, and uh, but he's still putting in enough punches to pile up the points. One minute to go in the 12th and final round. I think some of these below the border punches from George are simply because he can't lift his hands up that high anymore. Another good combination from Amanda Holyfield. 45 seconds and counting down. And a great fight. Boxing needs a fight like this. Holyfield seems to be uh, trying to hang on there, buy a little bit of time. You can't blame him, it's been a very fast pace. Holyfield has moved, moved, moved. 15 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds. The crowd is on their feet here at the convention hall. They've got more than their money's worth. There's the bow, and ends in a hug. What a great fight. Evander Holyfield appears to successfully defended his, his title. And George Foreman, what a, what a performance. He went the distance. A lot of people didn't think he could. Great fight out there. You're buzzing out of the box out there, baby. Come on. Congratulations. Foreman just thanking Lou Duva for giving him the opportunity to fight Evander Holyfield. There's a great champion. George Foreman has brought so much interest and joy to the sport of boxing in recent months. 
And now from the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino here in Atlantic City, we go to the scorecards. Eugene Grant scores about 116 to 111. Tommy Kazmarek has it, 115 to 112. And Jerry Roth scores it, 117 to 100. For the winner by unanimous decision. And still, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the real deal, Evander Holyfield. And you know, you know one thing? We had a great fight, and we got a great decision. I think this is a, a fight that boxing needed. We have no controversy. We had two great fighters give everything they had. And I think, uh, as you said earlier, this is exactly what this sport needed.